So here we are in the third project for my computational research methods class. So this is where we'll be in the meat of the semester, uh, where the students should have some idea of what they're doing. So you notice, uh, like we saw in the first video, we've got fewer learning objectives. Um, and I'll probably have sparser instructions at this point, because the students should have some idea of what they're doing at this point. Um, so let's see here. Let's move right into the first learning objective. Describe the differences between the steps of two methods of numerical integration. Okay, so I need to actually turn this into some instructions. Uh, let's see, describe the differences between the, I don't like steps there because we're gonna be talking about step size below, uh, between the processes of two methods of numerical integration. All right, so the goal is for the students to pick two from the four options. So we're going to say, uh, you have learned about four numerical integration methods uh, or yeah I, I like that better let's match our wording here two numerical integration methods there we go you've learned about four numerical integration methods and here I'll just have the three the the names here so we'll have left hand sum slash right hand sum. I wonder what the capitalization convention is on these. Uh, the midpoint rule, midpoint rule, trapezoidal rule, and Monte Carlo. You always have to say that with the excitement in your voice. You've learned about four numerical integration methods. Select two of these methods. Let's see, I'm, I'm debating whether, what should I do with left hand sum, right hand sum? Because they're kind of the same thing. They just, you know, one's on the left hand side, one's on the right hand side. Uh, let's see, select two of the, actually, I think I'll do it this way. Uh, let's see here, left hand sum, right hand sum. You have learned about five numerical integration methods. Select two of these methods, asterisk, asterisk. You may not select both the left hand sum and right hand sum as your two methods. And now this turned blue, what does that do? It makes a bullet out of me and you. Um, okay, is there a way for me to get a literal bullet there? Yes, I do a slash, okay. There's a way to get a little, excuse me, a literal asterisk, just a, um, whichever kind of slash that is, it's the latex slash. Select two of these methods and complete the following activities. Uh, activities and complete. Select two of these methods. You know, I don't think I need to list anymore. I think I can just give them two instructions. Uh, select two of these methods and paste their codes from, and now I have to go find my playlist for numerical integration. So we go over to playlists. And where is numerical integration for beginners? Um, let's see, this is the link to play it. This is the link to go to the playlist. Copy link address and paste, there we go. Select two of these methods and paste their codes from there into the two uh, code cells below. There we go. Then, Replace the text of this markdown cell with a discussion of the similarities and differences between these two methods. Then replace the text of this markdown cell with the discussion of the similarities and differences between these two methods. Okay, I like that. And then they have to paste, uh, let's say your first selected method just so it's a little more personal. And I don't have to paste anything into here, which is good. Okay. Next, we need to describe the differences between the results of the two methods. Uh, let's make this a little bit more compact. Um, how about we just say, how about we just take this, copy and paste. And we have results here between the results of two numerical integration methods. 
Okay, uh, use the codes you pasted above to evaluate the int to evaluate uh, the integral signed to you for this project because hopefully I get more than one student in this class and we can have uh, students evaluating different integrals. And those could be different based on the integrand, based on the integration bounds, or both. So use the codes you paste above to evaluate the integral, um, let's say function and bounds assigned to you for this project. Use the codes you pasted above to evaluate the integral function and bounds assigned to you for this project. Replace the text of this markdown cell with a discussion of the differences of the, it's only one number, it's not gonna be multiple differences, with a comparison of these results. Discuss possible reasons for these differences or differences in the results based on the numerical integration methods. Does that make sense? Use the codes you pasted above to evaluate the integral, function, and bounds assigned to you for this project. Replace the text of this markdown cell with a comparison of these results. Discuss possible reasons for differences in the results based on Discuss possible reasons for, it's so weird to say differences about two numbers. Like two numbers don't have multiple differences. Uh, discuss possible reasons for the difference in the results based on the numerical integration methods. Hint, think, uh, no, let's not clue them in to think about the previous answer. Based on the processes, used in these numerical integration methods. I know process and method might be a bit redundant, but I want them to think back to the answer up here. Oh, except I never actually used processes up here. Similarities and differences between the processes employed by these two methods. Uh, then I say employed by these numerical integration methods. Cool. All right, now comes the, uh, the ill-defined part, and I actually need a code cell after this, don't I? Let's say use a graph to describe the improvement of accuracy in each method when you decrease the uh, step size, except Monte Carlo doesn't have a step size. Uh, let's, let's, I'll tell you what, let's write the instructions for the other methods, and then I'll make an ex I'll write a, a separate set of instructions for Monte Carlo, or I'll just say you can't use Monte Carlo for this one. Learning objective three: Learn, use a graph to describe the improvement of accuracy in. Oh, do I want each method? Let's just say one in one numerical integration method when you decrease the step size. Okay. In the co uh, in the code cell below, paste one of your codes from above. Actually, let's make that a little more direct. Paste one of your codes from above into the code cell below. There we go. Didn't mean to cut paste there. <laughs> I cut paste. Uh, paste one of, that was so meta. Um, paste one of your codes from above into the code cell below. Now we're going to say Wrap the numerical integration method in this code. Uh, hang on. I want them to wrap it in a loop. How do I communicate to them to do that? This is probably something we'll go over how to do in class, to be honest with you. In this new code, add a loop around the numerical integration method around the portion of the code that performs the numerical integration method, add a loop around the portion of the code. Uh, let's do it this way. Add a while loop around the portion of the code that performs the numerical integration method 
this loop should perform the following actions. And we say one, progressively decrease the step size uh, used by the integration method, numerical integration method, e.g. dx equals 0 0.1, 0 0.05, Oh gosh, how am I going to get them to do this uh, in order of magnitude? I guess I can't have them do it in order of magnitude, can I? Uh, so let's say 0 .0 0 0.100, 0 0.009. Oh wait, no, <laughs> not that far down, Brian. 0 0.999, 0 0.998, 0 0.997, 0 0.996, comma, dot, 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 comma. 0 0.003, 0 0.001, 0 .00, 0 0.001, there we go. Two, graph the result of the integral for each step size. Uh, let's see, add the result of each integral. No, I don't wanna say add, that will take a little bit. Display, there we go, display the result no, the command is plot. Plot the result of the integral for each step size on a graph of integral versus step size. Then we'll say uh, add a, oh, this will be good. Add a markdown cell after this graph discussing the results or discussing the behavior displayed on the graph. There we go. Okay, so learning objective three, use a graph to describe the improvement of accuracy in one numerical integration method when you decrease the step size. Um, I guess I need to tell them to select, uh, I guess I need to tell them to select one. Uh, select one of your codes from above. Okay, I think, I, I think I know what to do here. If you selected a code other than a code with a numerical integration method that is not Monte Carlo, dot, dot, dot. Oops, excuse me. Then we say you do all this. Then we say, if you selected a code with the Monte Carlo integration method, dot, dot, dot. All right, um, let's see. So then I can copy and paste this. And basically instead of step size, I just refer to the number of data points. Paste your Monte Carlo code from above into the code cell below. In this new code, add a while loop around the portion of the code that performs the Monte Carlo method. This loop should perform the following actions. Progressively, de progressively increase the number of points used by the Monte Carlo method. And now we have, for example, all right, and what did I call the number of points in the Monte Carlo code? Sign in. I want to go to numerical integration for beginners. Uh, let's see, what did I call them in these codes? The step size and Monte Carlo. Um, okay, and okay, in these I called them step underscore size. Was that consistent? Yes, I called them step size. Okay, so let's actually change this dx to step underscore size, there we go. And then in Monte Carlo, call it n underscore points. Let's just copy and, oh yeah, over here, paste equal to, what did it start out with? It started out with a whole bunch. So let's have this start out with not so much. Um, actually, let's do it this way, because I, 
I don't want to have to teach them how to do a while loop with, an, with a power law um, increase. So let's just go with this. Say copy, comma, paste. Two, copy, comma, paste. Three, dot, 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 comma, paste. And then we'll have maybe a nine, comma, paste, and then a 10. I wonder why it's underlining this. Let's find out, control enter. Did it do something funny with it? It didn't do something funny with it. That's weird, anybody know why this is getting underlined? Maybe it's a suggestion to put in a comma. What is that, one, two, three, one, two, three. I wonder if that's why that's being underlined. Is that a suggestion for you to put in commas to make it easier to read? I don't know. Uh, let's see, I don't want to, I could put commas in, but I'm afraid the students will copy and paste them directly in, and then it won't know what to do with a comma. Um, let's see, I guess I need to put this in both because they'll probably stop reading uh, after each of these if blocks. Okay, and I'm going to have them add the markdown cell at the end because they need to start adding things to the project notebook. So I'm sneaking in a little learning objective of um, about uh, notebook management. Okay, so let's go over this. Learning objective number one, describe the differences between the processes of two numerical integration methods. You've learned about five numerical integration methods, left-hand sum, right-hand sum, midpoint rule, trapezoidal rule, and Monte Carlo. Select two of these methods, footnote, and paste their codes from there into the two code cells below. Then replace the text of this markdown cell with a discussion of the similarities and differences between the processes employed by these two methods. Note, you may not select both the left-hand sum and right-hand sum as your two methods. Okay, paste your first selected code, paste your second selected code. And we just have the discussion up there, we're not running the codes yet. Learning objective two, describe the differences between the results of two numerical integration methods. Use the codes you pasted above to evaluate the integral, functions and function of bounds, assigned to you for this project. Replace the text of this markdown cell with a comparison of these results. Discuss possible reasons for the differences in the results based on the processes employed by these numerical integration methods. Okay? And it's discuss possible reasons. I don't really expect the student to go in and verify by hand the, the millions of calculations going in to confirm that that was the result. I'm, I just want them to discuss possible reasons. Um, then learning objective three, use a graph to describe the improvement of accuracy in one numerical integration method when you decrease the step size. All right, let's change this to, to illustrate. Graphs really don't describe things. When you incorporate more data, that's kind of the more, that's the generic way I think of saying both of those. If there's a better way for me to say it, please let me know in the comments below. Um, select one of your codes from above. If you selected a code with a numerical integration method that is not Monte Carlo, paste one of your codes from above into the code cell below. In this new code, add a while loop around the portion of the code that performs the numerical integration method. This loop should perform the following actions. Progressively decrease the step size used by the numerical integration method. For example, step size going down by 0 0.001. That's probably a bit overkill, but you know. Uh, plot the result of the integral for each step size on a graph of integral versus step size. Add a markdown cell after this graph discussing the behavior displayed on the graph. Uh, that is not part of that line, so that needs to go down there. If you selected a code with the Monte Carlo integration method, paste your Monte Carlo code from above into the code cell below. In this new code, add a while loop around the portion of the code that performs the Monte Carlo method. This loop should perform the following actions. Progressively increase the number of points used by the Monte Carlo method. Plot the results of the integral for each step size on a graph of integral versus step size. Add a markdown cell after this graph discussing the behavior displayed on the graph. All right, I like this. I like the simplicity of the instructions. Um, the students should have an idea of what they need to do kind of step by step at this point. And, you know, like I said, we'll probably end up going over some of the particulars in class. So uh, again, if you've got any feedback on this, um, any questions or corrections, please let me know in the comments below. Again, this, uh, this template will be available in a link in the description below. Next time we'll move on to the project about interpolation. So they'll have another opportunity to select a method. That should be fun. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.